When the bell sound brings out, you hear it as well as the drum. How can this be? Even the less that of the elephants, horses, cows, sheep, and all the other various sounds around you. Nor only is it the case that you can hear the sound of the drum and the sound of the bell, but there are the sounds of elephants, horses, cows, sheep, all kinds of sounds that you can hear. Ultimately, has your ear gone out or not? Has your ear really gone to the place of the sound? If so, how is it that you have enough ears to go to the places of all those other sounds? You only have two ears. How can you have so many years? Sutra. If there is no coming or going, there will be no hearing either. Commentary. If you say that the ear does not go to the place of the sound and the sound does not come to the place of the ear, if there is no coming or going, then what do you hear? There will be no hearing either. You wouldn't hear anything. What is this doctrine all about? It demonstrates that the wonderful nature of true suchness of the first common treasure is neither produced nor extinguished. It pervades everywhere and everything. It is not like a person who, when he is at one particular place, is there, and when he leaves, he is no longer there. Rather, it has neither production and extinction. This demonstrate that the root nature is true, and that false thinking is false. So try. Therefore, you should know that neither hearing nor sound has a location, and thus the two places of hearing and sound are empty and false. Their origin is not in causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. Commentary. Therefore, because of the principle I have just explained, you should know, Ananda, you ought to know that neither hearing nor sound has a location. There is nowhere that the defiling sound of objects and your awareness appearing that reside. They haven't any home. They are probably more or less like beggars. They don't even have a place to live. And thus, the two places of hearing and sound are empty and false. Both the places are an empty falseness. Their origin is not in causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. They are not produced from causes and conditions, and they are not produced out of spontaneity. They are a re representation from within the wonderful nature of true suchness of the treasury of the first come one. So don't use the distinction-making mind to indulge in making distinctions among these kinds of defiling objects. Sutra. Moreover, Ananda, you smell the chanana in this sensor. When one particle uh, of this incense is lit, it can be smelled simultaneously through forty li around the city of Travasti. Commentary. Now the two places of fragrance and the nose with this awareness of smells will be discussed. Moreover, Ananda, you smell the chandana in this sensor. You sniff the burning incense and burning. When one particle of this incense is lit, in Chinese, the measure one particular true is one twenty-fourth of a length, and sixteen length make one chin about one and a third pounds. So when one particular would be a very small piece of the incense. Chandana incense also called ox head chandana. It is said to come from Ata Rakuru, the northern continent. When you light a very small piece of this incense, its fragrance almost immediately pervades a radius of 40 li, about 13 miles. We are not speaking here of the smoke which rises to the heavens, but of the fragrance which accompanies it. What is more, any pestilence or contagious disease is wiped out when this incense perfumes the atmosphere. The germs all disappear. When one particle of this incense is lit, 
it can be smelled simultaneously through 40 Leo route, the city of Shravasti. Sutra, what do you think? Is this fragrance produced from the Chandana wood? Is it produced in your nose or does it arise within emptiness? Commentary, what do you think? Ananda, what is the case here? In your opinion, is this fragrance produced from the Chandana wood? Does the Chandana fragrance arise from the Chandana wood? Is it produced in your nose or does it come from the organ of your nose? Or does it arise within emptiness, or is it produced in emptiness? Sutra, again, Ananda, suppose this fragrance is produced from your nose. What is said to be produced from the nose should come forth from the nose. Your nose is not Chandana, so how can the nose have the fragrance of Chandana? When you say you smell fragrance, it should answer your nose. For the nose to emit fragrance is not the, the meaning of smelling. Commentary again, Ananda. Suppose his, this fragrance is produced from the nose. You say it is produced from the organ of your nose. What is said to be produced from the nose should come forth from the nose. If it is the case that it is produced from the organ of the nose, the fragrance should come out of your nose. Your nose is not Chandana, but the organ of your nose is certainly not Chandana wood. So how can the nose have the, the fragrance of Chandana? There's no such principle. When you say you smell fragrance, you should enter your nose. If you say you smell fragrance, it is melted by your smelling nature and it should enter your nostrils. For the nose to emit fragrance is not the meaning of smelling. If you say the fragrance comes out of your nostrils, then it is not right to say you can still smell the fragrance because your nostrils can only smell what enters them. It cannot be that the fragrance is emitted by your nostrils. Now, basically, everyone knows that the fragrance arises from the Chandana wood when it, the incense is lit. Smoke rises into into the air. However, the fragrance is certainly not the incense smoke, for as soon as the incense lit, the fragrance can be smelled with a radius of 40 li of where the incense was lit. The incense smoke, on the other hand, simply rises up into emptiness. Why does the Buddha question Ananda in this way, asking him whether the fragrance of Tranana comes from the nostrils or from the Chandana incense. Everyone realizes without it being explained that if the Chandana incense is not lit, there isn't any fragrance, which proves that the fragrance comes from the incense. The Buddha is deliberately questioning Ananda in this way to see how he will answer. However, although the fragrance comes from the Chandana, the nature of smelling comes from the first common treasury. So the meaning does not lie in the fragrance, but in the nature of smelling. The nature of smelling is all pervasive and is all pervading and is neither produced nor extinguished. That is the important point. Sutra, so suppose it is produced from within emptiness. The nature of emptiness is everlasting and unchanging, and so the fragrance should be eternally present. It need what need should there be to rely on burning the dry, the dry wood in the censer? Commentary: Suppose it is produced from within emptiness. The nature of emptiness is everlasting and unchanging. If you say the fragrance comes forth from emptiness, the fragrance should be eternally present. The fragrance should always be there. It couldn't disappear. It would not be necessary to wait until the Chandana incense wood is burned in order for there to be the fragrance of Chandana. It should also be that at ordinary times. What need should there be to rely on burning the dry wood in the censer? 
rely on means that one must burn the incense in order to in order for the fragrance to come into being. This passage proves that the fragrance is not produced from emptiness. Sutra. Suppose it is produced from the wood. Now the nature of this incense is such that it gives off smoke when it is burned. If the no smells it, it should be filled with smoke. The smoke rises into the air, and before it has reached the distance, how is it that the fragrance is already being smelled at a distance of 40 li? Commentary. Suppose it is produced from the wood. Now the nature of this incense is such that it gives off smoke when it is burned. When it is lit, it turns into smoke. If the nose smells it, it should be filled with smoke. When the organ of the nostril smells it, there should be some smoke there. But this fragrance is not due to the smoke. The smoke rises into the air, but the fragrance pervades all places. There is a fragrance even when there is no smoke. And before it has reached the distance, how is it that the fragrance is already being smelled, smelled at the distance of 40 li? The smoke has not yet traveled the 40 li, but the fragrance has already reached that distance. And everywhere within that area, the fragrance can be smelled. Where would you say it comes from? The Buddha asks Ananda. Sutra, therefore you should know that neither the fragrance nor the nose smelling has a location, and so the two places of smelling fragrance are empty and false. Their origin is not in causes and conditions, nor do the natures arise spontaneously. Commentary, therefore you should know that neither the fragrance nor the no smelling has a location. Because of what has been explained, you should know that both the fragrance and the awareness of smelling have no location. They haven't any fixed place, and so the two places of smelling and fragrance, the awareness of smelling in the nose and the fragrance are empty and false. Their origin is not in causes and conditions nor do their natures arise spontaneity, uh, spontaneously. They are all representations which flow forth from the wonderful nature of true suchness within the nature of the thirst common treasury. Sutra Ananda, twice every day you take up your bowl along with the rest of the assembly and among what you receive many things of supreme flavor, such as curds, buttermilk, and clarified butter. Commentary From whole milk comes buttermilk, from buttermilk comes curds, and from curds comes butter. Butter can be further refined into clarified butter or ghee. The first period of the Buddha's teaching of Dharma is called the Avatamsaka period. The Avatamsaka period is likened to the time when the sun is first rising. From when the sun first rises, it first twelve places, 75 illumines the high mountains. The high mountains represent the great Bodhisattvas. The Avatamsaka Sutra teaches and transforms the great Bodhisattvas. So when the Buddha spoke the Avatamsaka, those are the two vehicles, the self hero and those who are enlightened conditions, had eyes but did not see. They could not see the Buddha manifesting the 10,000 foot Nishiyanda body. Those are the two vehicles. So, Shakyamuni Buddha as usual in the six foot body of an old Bishu. They had ears but did not hear the perfect satin teaching. They did not hear Shakyamuni Buddha speaking the perfect, sudden, wonderful teaching of the Avatamsaka Sutra. The five periods of Shakyamuni Buddha's teaching are likened to dairy products. The drama of the, of the, the Avatamsaka is like a whole milk. And those can digest whole milk, but infants cannot usually take whole cow's milk. 
the period of the Abadam Sakasu trial was devoted exclusively to the teaching and transforming of the Bodhisattvas. It was like milk taken directly from the cow. The second was the Agama period. Agama is a Sanskrit word which is interpreted as meaning incomparable Dharma, which means none of the Dharmas of externalist sects can compare to it. It is also called Abhidharma, that is the small behind goal. In the milk analogy, the Agama period is likened to the buttermilk, which can be made from whole milk. The nature of buttermilk is not so strong, and children can drink it as well. It is easy to digest. In the analogy of the rising sun, the second period is represented by the illumining of the mountain valleys, which means that the lower hands, lower lands are also shown upon. The third is the Vipulia period. In the milk analogy, this period is represented by the curd extracted from buttermilk. And in the analogy of the rising sun, the plains are now illuminated. The fourth period is the prana period. In the milk analogy, it is represented in the butter, which is processed from curd. And the, in the sun analogy, it is close to the full light of noon. The fifth is the Dharma flower, Nirvana period. It is uh, represented in the milk analogy by clarified butter. The flavor of the Dharma flower sutra, the sutra of the lotus flower of wonderful Dharma, sometimes called the lotus sutra, is as wonderful as the flavor of clarified butter. In the analogy of the, the rising sun, the Dharma flower sutra is the sun when it is directly overhead. At midday, the sun shines on everything, illumining the high mountains, the valleys, and the plain. The Dharma flower sutra is a most important sutra in Buddhism. The Suragama sutra is for the opening of wisdom. The Suragama sutra points us out the path, the way of cultivation. The Lotus Sutra is for accomplishing Buddhahood. Everyone in the Dharma Flower Assembly should become a Buddha. As the Sutra says, with one recitation of Namo Buddha, all can accomplish the way, the Buddha way. The Dharma Flower Sutra is for opening out the provisional and manifesting the actual. In its doctrine, the ancient forms are rejected and only the actual was spoken is spoken. The Suragama and the Dharma Flower Sutra are extremely important, extremely important in Buddhism. The doctrine of the Dharma Flower Sutra is the most esoteric and wonderful. Great Master Chi of the Ten Thai School opened enlightenment while reading it.